Uh, hi, this is Kevin, and welcome to part three of the uh, tutorial on the model coding assignment. Uh, these are all part of the Easy University uh, project. And um, we just uh, finished up uh, part two in which we uh, kind of implemented all the basic features of our uh, database model uh, classes. And we registered those uh, classes with the, the Django admin application, which is really pretty cool for uh, data entry and uh, data edit and those kinds of things. And uh, we got it up, and it was kind of disappointing because uh, even though there's a lot of capability there, it just didn't look like we wanted. And um, here we are. I still have the app up if we go to Course Info. The problem we're having, we've only tried for the, for the most part to enter uh, courses, and we were working on one uh, section. And the problem is, um, the primary problem is that each of these... Uh, each of these things that are uh, kind of uh, data objects uh, now uh, and will be uh, uh, saved in um, uh, tables, right? Uh, they've got really technical names like uh, course object one, course object two. And the other problem is is that they're not really is, is sorting into any useful order. Um, what happens is that the newest one always gets placed on top. If I add a third one here, and uh, I say I want to this to be uh, info 691, and uh, uh, it's going to be called user-centered interaction design. And I save this. Uh, and now we have course object uh, three. So I've got, uh, from uh, my memory, I know I've got uh, 691, uh, 780, 340. They're in really no good order at all. All right. So uh, let's uh, close the browser. OK. And let's go and uh, add the features to the model classes that will get us what we're looking for. Okay. Now, um, by the way, I just want to show you before we go there that uh, there is actually data, uh, data in our external uh, database. So we didn't actually check that out before. So we're going to uh, SQLite Studio. Okay. And I want to go to the uh, course uh, table. I'll double click on that. And I want to go over to the data tab. Um, <laughs> and it's not there. OK, so this will be a slight pause <laughs> while I get this working. I'll be right back. Well, that was easy. Uh, there's a refresh uh, button up here. So there's a toolbar across the top and there's a refresh uh, button and I hit the refresh button and there are my three courses. Okay. And they're appearing in the table uh, in just the order that I added them. O okay. Uh, relational databases according to the overall standards say uh, that the rows and tables um, don't have a deterministic order. Um, it's up to each implementation to decide if they want to put them in a particular order. There are, impl there are implementations of, uh, of uh, SQL that don't have, uh, where the tables don't have a particular order, like uh, PostgreSQL. Uh, won't show uh, your data in a particular order. Uh, here, apparently, in SQLite Studio, um, at least for the purposes of displaying the data, it's going to put them in primary key order, um, which is, of course, uh, uh, not the order that we want. I, I would like them in order of course number, uh, course name, which is not how they're showing up uh, now. 
Okay, so I just wanted to show you that with the basic features of the model class, we, we can persist the data out to the relational database just fine. The features that we're now going to add to the model class, um, therefore the admin app, and uh, later they're going to be used by our custom app for the same thing that they're used by um, with the admin app. Okay, they're going to give our uh, data objects uh, proper uh, text or uh, representation so that when we list them and we show them, uh, they look the way we want to. And also, um, when we say we want to put them into order, they'll put them into the order that we want them in. Okay, so uh, that's going to be important for this admin app in the short run and for our uh, custom app in the long run. Okay, so how do we add that uh, functionality? Well, how are we going to do this? Let's uh, shrink all this down and let's go back to models.py and that's pretty big type. That's uh, pretty easy to see. And let's get us a little more room here. And what could we add on models.py that would get the job uh, done. And I just want to say that there are two things that we can add, okay? And I would go through two layers of adding them, but to tell you the truth, it's going to make the tutorial longer. So I'll, I'll do them layer by layer here for the first one, okay? So this uh, semester is a class, okay? And so far, it's, it's a class that has two instance uh, variables, uh, semester ID is semester name. Um, it probably has a bunch of methods. It is inherited from the super class, um, but it, it doesn't have any uh, methods of its own, either that it uh, is adding or that it's overriding. We're going to override a method right here uh, that we call string, uh, which has the double underscore, str double underscore. The double underscore uh, Python people call dunder, double under, dunder. So uh, uh, the uh, dunder str um, method returns a string representation of the object, okay? And return is uh, pretty straightforward, but this uh, syntax takes a little bit of explanation. First of all, we have a formatting string. So it says the result is going to be a single string, percent, percent s. Then we have the percent, and then we have an expression that provides the number of fields that we're expecting here. So we only have, we're only expecting a single field. So we say uh, self, which is how we how we refer to the current instance of the object. We want to use the semester name field from the current object, and we want to format it as a string. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, do the same thing for course. I should have done that for course because we're working on course. But uh, course is just going to be a little more complex. Okay. So uh, course. And again, uh, typically between the instance uh, variables and uh, the methods, we skip a single line. And here we do the same thing, except that We've got uh, two values, so it's going to be the the formatting string here says I've got a string, a space, a dash, a space, and another string, and then um, I have a percent, and then I, I've got the data. So the data is in this uh, tuple that contains um, the course uh, number from the current instance uh, self and the course name from the current instance uh, self. Now, one of the things that I really like about the uh, development server for um, Django is 
that once you have that server up, if you change your Django code and you save it, when you go back to the browser, uh, you're, you're executing the new code. So I'm going to go back to uh, going to go back to admin. Okay, and you'll see I'm already signed in. Uh, uh, sign in by default is sticky. Okay, even across uh, browser sessions and server sessions, uh, one of the things we're going to do when we we get uh, control of the app is that we're going to make it unsticky. Um, because we're not going to want uh, we're not going to want it uh, by default to uh, keep uh, people logged in. But let's go back to uh, courses, okay? And look at this. Because a course has a, a string representation with representation with two parts, course number, and, and, and then space dash space and then course name any place where we use the string representation of that object now that we've overridden the string method um, we're going to get that wherever we're trying to display that object and get a string representation of it isn't that fantastic so that's going to work for uh, a course and we also did semester, so let's just go back up and do a uh, semester. So here's a semester. We don't have any yet. So let's add the ones for 2018. Let's say uh, 2018 uh, uh, spring. Save that. You can see that I put it in when I was doing my testing before on my test version of this. And add another one. Uh, 2018 uh, summer. And let's uh, click on save and add another. And let's put in 2018, uh, sorry, space add uh, fall. Okay, so there they are. Okay, now they came out uh, fall, summer, spring, um, and um, that's probably just accidental. Uh, well, they should have come out spring, summer, fall. If if they were, uh, what would they? If they were in alphabetical order, they'd be in fall, spring, uh, summer. Okay. So we've got that. All right, so that's good. Now, what else do we want to do? Uh, well, we've I've shown you how to add the code for uh, the string representation, but we haven't addressed the ordering. Okay, so how could we order these? Let's do this for uh, course first. Okay. Um, yeah, we're just going to add the ordering for course. Okay. So we're going to go to course. And we're going to skip a line and we're going to add. We're not going to add a method. Uh, we're going to add an internal class. And you're going to say, Kevin, that's too fancy. I, you know. I've never really put an internal class inside of another class. Um, and I'd say, uh, have faith, it works. Uh, okay, so the class is called Meta, and it holds metadata about the model class. And the metadata about the model class um, gives information about how you would like it to behave. And uh, one of the things that you can say is it has the following ordering. Okay, so we say that we want the first field to be considered as course number, and then the second one to be considered as course name. Okay, and again, as long as we properly save that code, 
Okay, we can go back to the server. Okay, and we can go back to admin. And go back to courses. And our courses are in the right order. Pretty good, huh? Okay, now, uh, there's another consideration other than the right order, and that is uh, some of the columns, and we defined them, we said that the, that the columns have to be unique. Okay, so, uh, uh, and others we didn't, okay? And it turns out that on course number, we didn't say it had to be unique. And at both of the universities where I teach, um, there are uh, several courses that share a course number. Uh, and so uh, they can't be unique, even if they're only applying to current uh, courses. But the combination of the course number and the course name are unique. Okay, so in fact, I teach uh, two different courses, or I have taught two different courses that are part of the uh, special topics Info 691, and one is uh, user centered interaction uh, design, and the other is uh, uh, web uh, development using application frameworks. So, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to add a uh, course, I want to be able to add an infost 691 uh, and I want to be able to call it uh, web development using application frameworks which I've already uh, typed in and save it and I don't want to have any complaint at all okay because those are two different courses they just happen to share a course number but I don't want you to be able to enter uh, uh, Info 691 user centered interaction design a second time. That would be an error. So let's uh, try it now. So we just say Info, uh, Info 691 and we say uh, user centered interaction design and uh, we say save and it goes uh, okay. I'll have two of those. Well, I don't want two of those. So uh, there are times when you want more than one field, more than one column uh, considered, and in combination you want them to be, and the phrase that we use in Django is unique together. Okay, so let's go and get rid of the second one of these. Okay, and delete it. Uh, yes, I'm sure. And then we go back, yeah, we're okay now. And now let's go back, we won't close that. Let's go back to, uh, to course and add, there's another uh, metadata entry that we can add on as a field to the class meta, and it's called unique together. Okay, so we're gonna add that, and we're saying, that these two fields have to be unique when considered together. So the combination of course number and course name, you can only have one instance of each of those uh, combinations. So let's make sure that this has been uh, saved. Okay. And then let's uh, go back into our application, uh, which I think was in Chrome. Was it? It's not behaving like it was in Chrome. Nope. So let's uh, do this again. I don't know where it was. Uh, okay. So we've got this. And let's go to admin. Admin. And we're logged in. And let's go to courses. Okay, and now they're ordered the right way. We did that uh, with um, a field that we entered to the to the meta class. 
uh, but n and and now we shouldn't uh, be able to make the same error again. We shouldn't be able to re-enter this 691 user-centered interaction design. Let's give that a true a try. Um, info 691 uh, user-centered interaction design. Without that constraint uh, field added, it allowed us to do it, but now uh, won't work. Please correct the error below. Course with this course number and course name already exists. Okay, it doesn't work, and then we can just uh, come come off of that. Okay, so that unique uh, together uh, is not something that. Uh, we put on the original um, uh, features of the database. It is implemented on the physical database. We'll see that when we get over to the other side. So it does have a physical database equivalent. Uh, we create a unique index on those two columns and we'll see that. Okay, so um, course is all done. Okay. Let's go up to semester and uh, let's let's get everything in for semester. Okay. Okay, so on semester we've got the string representation, okay, but we don't have the meta internal meta class that is going to do the ordering. Okay, so we're just going to add that. Again, we uh, we skip one line, okay, for these things that are under the semester class. So both um, both uh, uh, the method uh, dunder string and the and the internal class meta are properties of class uh, uh, semester. They're contained inside of it. Okay, so that's going to be that. And we're just going to add all the rest of these and then we'll test it all at once. So uh, semester has the string and the meta. Uh, course has the string and the meta. Let's see what we're going to do for instructor. Okay. Well, instructor has a string and, and a meta. And let's see what they look like. Oh, we skipped uh, two lines there. We didn't want to do that. Okay, so uh, for the instructor, we want to have uh, the formatting is string comma space string where it's last name, first name. Okay, that makes sense. And then the ordering is going to be last name, first name. Okay, I think that makes sense. Let's see the next one. Student. That's probably going to be uh, kind of similar. Okay, so what are we going to do? What other uh, kind of uh, properties are we going to give to the student model class in order to get the behavior that we would like for student? Okay, now they're both uh, fancy. Okay, uh, with the student, we want to show the nickname if there's a nickname, and we want to put it into parens. Okay, so the question is, do we have a nickname or not? You remember that we uh, pre-populated that field with an empty string, so unless we have filled it. Uh, up here you can see the default is the empty uh, string, right? Uh, unless we put a value in there, it's going to be equal to the empty string. So we're going to say, um, we're going to say uh, in the short one, we're not going to give any re result at all. And then we're going to return the result. So now we're going to populate uh, the variable result with uh, one of two alternative uh, formats. If the nickname is empty, then it's just going to be um, last name comma first name. 
okay and we do that if the nickname is not empty it's going to be last name comma first name paren nickname last name first name nickname okay so uh, we're not going to show empty parentheses when a person does not have a nickname uh, what's the order going to be the order is going to be last name first name nickname now um, I do uh, have a number of classes in which I've, I've got people with the same first and last uh, 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 name. If they have a very common first and last names, uh, that can be true. And we distinguish them by the way that they'd like to call themselves. And we figure out a way that they're going to be different. And uh, I put that into nickname. Um, and I've also said that these have to be unique together. Now this is kind of interesting because um, um, typically when you're doing record keeping for persons, you do have the ability to have uh, persons with the exact same name. And typically you want to somehow in the data work record, you want to disambiguate them. And typically you do things uh, that use things that are better identifiers like a student ID number. Okay. And, and I don't even uh, track that kind of data. So what I'm going to say is that in our application, the combination of the last name, the first name and the nickname have to be unique. Now that's, that meets my uh, requirements. Does that meet the real world requirements? Well, maybe not, but um, this I'm, I'm the user here. I'm the boss, so I get to say it. So we've got the ordering and the uh, the uh, unique uh, together. Okay, so we're getting down towards the end. We've got two more left. Uh, section. What do we have for a section? Well, section's got sort of a wild string uh, representation. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So section. There we go. So uh, ah right. So we want the section to say course number section name so in this case it might be infos 340 okay and then in parens a semester name so uh fall uh, 2018 fall or 2018 spring is this a perfect way to represent it no i don't think so but um the last time through the course this seemed to serve us pretty well so uh, i'm going to leave it as is so that's that and then i'm saying that in terms of ordering uh if we're going to do a listing i want to see the course number the section name and then the semester uh, name so maybe i'm trying to look up um, a particular uh section and i'll look up course number section name and then i'll i'll see if it occurred in several semesters and then i'll pick the right one Okay, that'll keep me from having to search too far and wide. That seemed to serve us pretty well last time, too. And then the registration. What are we going to do on that? Well, uh, let's look at this. Okay. So let's so let's look at the at the information. We've got a combination of a section and a student. Okay. So here's what I want to do. I want to have um, the string representation for the section and then the spring representation for the student separated by a slash. What's really interesting here is we're reusing the strings for uh, um, for section and student. 
So what it's actually going to do here when it gets when you call the uh, uh, when the string uh, method for registration it gets called and it's um, formatting the string representation of the registration. This uh, first one, this calls the string method for the section to be called. This uh, s second one, because we simply name the object and the context says we want a string, it calls the string method on the student uh, to be called. We don't have to redefine those. We can just uh, simply borrow from the way they were defined on that class. Uh, and so you'll see that when we get to it. And what's the ordering? Well, section before student, and then unique uh, together section student. I don't want to be able to register the same student in the same section, because that doesn't make sense in terms of our application. Um, uh, Charles uh, Lee can only be registered for my class one time. He either is or he's not. He's not. He shouldn't be uh, registered uh, twice. Uh, okay, so uh, coming along and adding these uh, these uh, string methods and the meta um, internal classes with their metadata fields, we've added a lot more information. Uh, a little bit of it uh, is actually going to get passed through to the uh, database. Uh, okay, what's that? Those uh, unique uh, togethers. Those um, are going to be enforced um, within uh, Django by uh, the Django code, but they'll be enforced in the database by uh, unique uh, constraints. I'll show them to you. All right. Uh, the ordering um, is just for uh, the data entry. It's it's just for the admin function and it'll be uh, for the admin app and it'll be for our custom uh, course info app. Okay. Uh, it's not for the relational uh, database. Relational uh, databases, uh, when you do uh, select, you have an order by clause. That's what's going to count uh, there. Uh, okay. Um, so that's all we have. So let's uh, save it. Okay. And I, again, I can't emphasize e enough that the way the editor works is when you come off of a line, it saves it. I. Uh, I have this uh, kind of compulsive way of uh, saving it with a command S on my Mac or a control S on Windows, uh, which actually will save it again, but uh, it's probably kind of wasteful. Okay, let's go back and look at our more final version and let's add some test uh, data. So the things that I want you guys to add when you're doing this uh, part three, um, We've already added a test user. When you're in part three here and you complete the model and you get it all right, I want you to add enough data that I can actually test your your uh, 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 your code. Okay. So um, what would be enough data? Well, kind of like what I'm going to do. All right. So let's uh, let's get a look. Okay, I'm going to get back to admin. All right, and I'm automatically logged in. We won't fix that for a couple of weeks, actually. Uh, courses, instructors. So let's look at our courses. Uh, courses, well, we've got four courses. I think that's enough uh, courses. Okay, uh, let's go to instructors. We don't have any. Let's add them. So let's add uh, me. Kevin uh, Trainer. Okay. And let's add uh, uh, my old friend uh, Jane Scholar. Jane Scholar. Okay. 
And look, Jane Scholar comes before Kevin Trainer. That's good. And let's add uh, two more people uh, to my old instructor buds, uh, Dan Hall. Uh, and uh, Bill Qualls. In each case, we go back a good long way. So, I would hope that they would use uh, my name as well. And they're all in alphabetical order. It's hard to believe that the second one actually starts with the Q, but it does. All right, well, that I think we're getting the behavior that we want there. Oh, and uh, did we do a unique uh, together on, uh, oh yeah, we did a unique together on name. Did we do a unique together on instructor name? Let's look at that. I think maybe we want to add that. Yeah, I think we do. Let's go add that. Okay, so how could we do that? I don't think I want two instructors with the exact same name. Okay, I'd want them to put some kind of a disambiguator in that. So let's uh, give ourselves a little room. Okay, here's a unique uh, together with that we used for, uh, oh, let's uh, find the one we used for student. Okay, this looks pretty good. This is gonna be pretty close to what we want for instructor, right? All right, so I'm gonna copy that. And I'm going to go back up and find my instructor. I have an ordering, and then let's throw in a unique together. Okay, and then let's just get rid of the nickname. Okay, because there is no nickname. All right, and again, we save that. We ought to be able to go right back in, into the test. Okay. Uh, that didn't work. So let's uh, go back to PyCharm. Perhaps I uh, closed that. I don't know whether I did or not. But where is it? It's right in here. Um, there it is. Okay. So we bring it up again. And uh, what are oh, we using Firefox? That's why I wasn't finding it. Uh, and uh, click on admin. I'm oh, sorry. Let's do that. Let's add slash admin on there. Okay. And let's go back to instructors. Okay. Uh, and let's just uh, make sure you can't add uh, Kevin Trainer again. So, uh, first name Kevin. Uh, last name trainer and see how that goes no that doesn't work okay now um, uh, okay I just want to point out that uh, this works in Django okay uh, have all the changes that we made to the model, have they been applied to the external database? No, they haven't yet. Is that a real problem for us? No, we haven't really added anything that's uh, changing the, the way that the, the database is going to behave in a, a significant way for us. But it is a problem that uh, the definition of the database is different. Um, in the external database, then it, it conflicts with the model because we haven't done a migration in a while. So let's just do that, okay? Let's close this. How do you do a migration when you have the server up? Well, uh, here's what I do. I stop the server. So I'm just going to click on that little red thing. Okay, and now I'm going to say uh, uh, make migrations uh, and it made some okay you can see how uh, 
it's saying it's changing the meta options on all these uh, course instructor whatever alter unique together for course and all that kind of stuff so uh, yeah these are going to make some changes in the external uh, database and now we're going to say uh, migrate and it's going to apply those uh, and it ran the second uh, course info uh, migration and now let's just go out and look at the database okay so SQLite Studio alright let's um, let's go look for the rules for instructor okay so let's look at instructor okay instructor ID first name last name uh, let's refresh instructor make sure we have all the information now let's go to data and here we are Kevin Trainer, Jane Scholar, Dan Hall, Bill Qualls okay so these aren't in any alphabetical order okay they're not in the order that they show up in uh, the admin application because that's internal to the admin application okay the ordering in the external SQL database is really going to be done um, if you're just using the database all itself you're going to have to write a select and have an order by clause and then what what other things uh, do we have do we have uh, constraints uh, yeah we have got not nulls and uh, primary keys and look what we have we have an index uh, now where we have a unique index that was built with last name and first name so that's the unique uh, together that's being enforced in Django um, by the by the, the uh, unique uh, uh, together meta annotation but uh, if in fact we were adding data directly to the database with some other application we do have a constraint here um, that uh, enforces the same thing. So whenever you change the model you have to remember to do a make uh, migrations and then uh, to migrate. Now you can do those an application at a time. We could have done them just for uh, course info. Uh, uh, that would be a little more typing and I was a little too uh, lazy to do that. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back and add a little more test data. So I, we have to run our server again. Oh, and by by the way, you can use your up arrow to uh, find old uh, commands. Okay, so that's that. And let's go back to wherever we were. So go back to admin. And remember, I want you to add enough uh, data to your uh, database that I'm going to be able to test it when I get there. So we had courses, we had instructors. Let's look at this. Um, good. Registrations is next on the list, but that um, we have to have everything else. Uh, we have to have both students and sections for that. So let's not go there yet. Semesters, do we have enough of those? Yeah. Uh, fall, spring, summer. Um, I just want to point out that while we have these things in, in nice alphabetical order, this is in, in the order in which they fall in the academic uh, calendar. In the academic uh, calendar, they go spring, summer, fall. We'll eventually make a change to the way that we're handling semester data uh, to make it um, a more robust relational database uh, uh, design. And we'll be able to fix the ordering at that point. But that's uh, down the road quite a bit. OK, so semesters are fine. Uh, I think we have, uh, do we have any students? Do we have any students? Okay, so let's add some students. Um, so we've got uh, uh, Mary Scholar. She's uh, related to Jane. Mary Scholar. 
Okay. Save and add another. Um, so let's have a William Smith. And let's say he's called Junior. Okay. And it turns out his father's in the claim, same uh, class, even. So, uh, William Smith has the nickname Senior. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we've got uh, my old friend Hector Garza. We've got him. Um, we've got uh, oh, my old friend Francesca Stagliano. Another one of my good old friends, uh, Stagliano. Uh, and the nickname, uh, um, this is going to be the, uh, this is going to be uh, Franny. Okay. And then we're going to have another one. Oh, we're going to have to add another one. And her name is also going to be Francesca. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, father, daughter, uh, mother, daughter, things, uh, Stagliano. Uh, and, uh, we're going to call her, uh, Mama. Okay. Yeah, maybe we don't want to come so call somebody Mama in class. Um, uh, we'll call her, uh, Primo which is probably the wrong gender or something. We'll call her Prima. Okay. That's probably a little better. Prima. Okay. And the, those are all those. Okay. And again, uh, could we add another one that's exact, exactly the same? Oh, I, see, I made a mistake. So I can go to Smith and turn him into a Smith. And that's that. Okay? And you can uh, add, change, uh, delete, do all those kind of things. That's good. And uh, let's put some registrations in. Okay? So let's go up. Course Info. Uh, registrations. Uh, add one. So uh, the student is... Let's put the Steglianos uh, into... Um, oh, I don't have any uh, sections yet, so that's not going to work. Let's go and create some sections. Course Info, Sections. So there's some work here. You can see it. So uh, section name uh, 001, semester, fall 2018, course Intro to Systems Analysis, Instructor, Kevin. Save and add another. Uh, let's have an online class, 201. It's an online class in uh, Milwaukee, uh, fall. Um, it's also going to be Systems Analysis. And uh, that's also going to be me. Okay, and let's uh, let's just add a third class. Um, uh, uh, Two hundred one. Okay, semester uh, current. Um, web development using application frameworks. Instructor uh, me. So I'm the only one who's really uh, working. So, we have all of those. Okay, so now when we go to do a registration, we're going to have to register a real student for a real section. Okay, registration. Let's add one. 
So let's go back and get the Steglianos. Uh, Franny is going to be in my uh, on campus uh, 340. 340.001. Save and add another. Uh, uh, Prima is going to be in the online one. She's an online student. And add that. Okay, now I just want to I just want to show we can't add Prima again. So if we want to add uh, Prima to the online section again, uh, that's not going to work. Okay, uh, that's not going to work at all. I say, oh, I didn't mean Prima. I meant uh, William Smith Senior. The senior people all seem to like those online classes. Okay, so now we have all of those. Okay, so that's it. That's what we want to do. We want to have reasonable data for all of these. And we also want to test, uh, can we um, can we create uh, duplicates where we're not supposed to? Okay. Uh, that's it. So the only thing I would do, probably if I were working on this on my own and not uh, distracted by doing the uh, tutorial, I probably would have saved, uh, I probably would have committed my work uh, part by part. I probably, I think we did a commit at the end of part one, a commit, uh, I would have done a commit at the end of part two. Now I want to do a commit at the end of part three. I'll just uh, do this a different way. Uh, I'm going to click on PyCharm, go up to VCS. I want this VCS operations pop-up, which is a uh, control V. I could get that and I could say I want to commit. And that pops up and there's a commit message here. You can see all these things are, uh, are checked. So we have unversion files. Now, uh, we don't want the unversion files, that's for sure. Uh, commit, it, those are the things that we excluded. And now we're just going to say, uh, uh, finish uh, part three of model tutorial. Okay. That looks uh, good enough, and we're going to commit. Okay, and uh, I could go up there and I could do a push uh, too. So the same thing, operations pop, uh, pop up. I could do a push up to the remote repository. Uh, push, and that worked. Uh, wants to know my password. Oh, because I haven't told it yet. Uh, I'm going to say always allow. Oh, this is part of my keychain. Sorry. So this is my login. It's always the last thing you try that blows up. Okay. Okay. And so I guess that uh, PyCharm had saved my uh, password. Uh, for that and it just uh, wanted to be sure that uh, I was me push uh, successful so that's it so um, just to uh, come back to where we are okay um, for a lot of people this uh, this uh, the admin application that we have uh, it might be all the application that they need, right? Uh, sorry about that. If you look at it, it might be easily all the application that they need. It's not branded, okay? Um, you're certainly treating the database as a database, although uh, it does have a lot of rules that we were able, able to impose. 
uh, uniqueness uh, rules, uh, protection to, uh, against accidental uh, deletes and things like that. So we're able to get a lot of um, we're able to get a lot of uh, functionality just out of the admin app. Um, the challenge for us when we go to build our own uh, custom app will be to uh, do more. Okay, I think for some people who just wanted to have a uh, personal use handy dandy app uh, to ke keep track of some personal data, uh, they might stop here. Okay, uh, if in fact we have uh, uh, users who are not the programmer and who don't know Django, well, I think this would probably be a rude uh, place to stop, which is why we're doing the rest of the course. But you must admit, we have a lot of uh, functionality. And um, the first part that we coded for the model uh, classes, um, it provided most of the information that we needed to create the external database. And then that whole uh, like second and third layer that we added on for uh, the string, um, the string uh, methods, and then uh, the the annotations that went into the, the meta classes, although they did have some impact on the definitions of the database, for the most part, the things that go into the meta annotations are things that are internal to Django. Uh, they're things that really provide a lot of uh, features that we were able to take advantage of in the admin app and we're going to be able to leverage those as well when we create our custom course info app. So um, remember to uh, commit your work and to save it uh, when you submit your assignment, every time we submit, the project is going to be called the same thing, but we're going to submit it to a different uh, place. We're not changing the name of the project as we go from week to week to week. Okay? That's, I think, one of the reasons why I like to keep it under version control is that I always do a commit before I... I uh, zip it up and submit it. And so I can always go back and find a copy of, I can always reproduce the state of the project when I did that, uh, that assignment submission. Okay. All right, there we go. Well, I'll see you in class. Have fun. Bye-bye.